Hello again. I'm back with another clock to repair. This one is a Hammond Riviera. It's from the 1930s. And one of my subscribers reached out to me and said that she inherited this clock from her great grandparents and was hoping I'd be able to repair it. So I had her send it to me. It has a lot of issues. Uh, cosmetically, the brass frame has a lot of wear on it. There's areas where it's down to the bare underlying metal. It's rather pitted. I don't think there's much I can do about that. The rest of it might be able to be polished up. There's also a break in the glass down here, which may or may not fall out once I remove the uh, glass from the case. Uh, but what's more of a concern is on the back, obviously it's missing a power cord, but the power cord that I'm seeing is coming out of the bottom here and it's just bare wires. And from dealing with these clocks in the past, I know the cord is supposed to come out of here. So I don't know, I'm suspecting that someone in the past opened this up to replace a power cord, couldn't get it coming out of where it belongs. I really have no idea what I'm gonna find when I open it up. But that'll be the first step, and I just have what looks like four screws around the edge, edges here. And I'll take them off and uh, we'll see how it goes. I've removed the four screws, and let's see just how easy it is to get this out. Okay, that's not bad at all. Let's see this piece of glass here, what's going on with that. Here's a little breakdown over here in the corner. Looks like there's a plastic frame that holds the glass in position. Actually, it's metal. And yep, it is broken. So it's pretty unlikely that this piece of glass is gonna be reattached. Whether I can find a piece of replacement glass remains to be seen. But if I can, I would prefer that than just, you know, restoring it with this broken piece. Now we'll take a closer look at the clock. So the first step is going to be to remove the hands. And this face is particularly nice and in very good condition. So I want to be extra careful not to put any scratches on the hands. To take the hands off, I'll try to gently pry them up with a small screwdriver. I'll fit some cardboard underneath it to cushion it, and I plan to go very slowly with that. So I'm just going to get them off, and then uh, and I'll come back once they're removed. They've actually come off quite easily, so I'm going to do the last one. Show you the technique. Slide a piece of cardboard under the hand. and just pry it up. Now we should be able to remove the whole face here. And next, I'm gonna to wanna to remove the mechanism from this front plate. And to do that, my two choices are to take out these three screws here in which case, I'm not sure if this whole part will come away from this plate. I think that'll happen. Or undo these three screws on this side. So, <laughs> decisions. Let's start with these. After looking more closely, I think I'll take off these three first which should allow this housing to come away. But let's see. One. We 
have washers here, at least on this screw. Yep, have here and here as well. Okay. Okay, nothing is budging right off the bat. Oh, here we go. There we go. Okay. Let me take a closer look at this. Well, here's the wire. And there's really no reason, as I'm seeing this, why it can't be repositioned coming up through here and not the way it's supposed to. So what I'm going to do next is work on attaching a new power cord to here and we'll find out if it runs. A couple of things to point out when I'm seeing with the wires, and these are the old cloth covered wires. I'm going to have to trim away some of the fibers that are in here. And these two wires were actually almost twisted together. So I'd like to make sure that there were no shorts in here, that the, the coil is still intact. So I can test that using an ohm meter. If everything's intact, the numbers should be flashing on here. And very good. That tells me that the wiring is intact and it should be able to be restored. It may even work just by hooking it up to the power cord. But what I want to do next is I'm also concerned with the play in these wires. There's going to be a lot of bending that has to happen as I twist the uh, new power cords on and off. And my concern is that I end up breaking it off from the coil. So what I plan to do first is sort of pinning them down here and just gluing them in position with some epoxy glue. And that will stabilize where these wires go into the coil. So any motion up here won't disturb that. So I'll work on that next and then I'll strip off more of the insulation here and attach the new power cord. What I've done is secured the wire with some epoxy cement. And although it says this stuff cures in five or 10 minutes, I like to let it go for 12 hours. That gets it very hard and this wire hopefully won't come free as I manipulate it to attach the new power cord here. The other concern is as I cleaned off the fabric, the cloth covered wiring here, it just gets removed all the way up the wire. So I had to wrap electrical tape around either end here to prevent them from touching each other and shorting the whole thing out. So next up, I'm gonna attach the new power cord and we'll see if it's working. One thing that I forgot to mention earlier with this clock when I was giving the description, it's also an alarm clock. And instead of having the extra hand on the front that you turn to set what time you want it to go off, it has this little knob here that you rotate for whatever hour you want the alarm to come on, and this, this little lever activates the on and off to the alarm. And also, uh, because it is a Hammond, it is not a self-starting clock. There's a little start knob that you have to give a spin to get the second hand going. Anyway, I'm going to work on attaching the power cord, and uh, we'll see if we get lucky here. I've attached the power cord, plugged it in, and there's a lot of issues going on with this clock, and I will try to show them to you. First of all, when you plug it in, it's very noisy. And the other thing I was noticing is that when you turn the start knob, and I'll try to see if we can see this. The gears actually go the wrong way. This is the direction to start it and you'll see that it stops and reverses. So technically it looks like it's running backwards but that's not evident on the second hand which really isn't moving at all. And if, if I spin it the right way that's how the second hand should go but it's not. And why it's spinning backwards uh, I really, I've never seen this happen in one of these clocks before. So I'm going to have to open the whole thing up and uh, 
see if I can figure out what's making this happen. A few other things I want to point out with this clock, because it's from the, the 1930s instead of the 20s, it wasn't made with an oil-filled rotor to power it. It just has what I refer to as a flywheel. What that means is the oil, which eventually leaks out and gunks up all the gears in here, a clock like this, these gears are still quite clean, and usually you don't have to take the whole thing apart in order to uh, restore it. The other concern is because it's an alarm, there are additional gears and springs in here, which makes it a lot more complex in opening it up and making sure that things don't get knocked out of whack. And lastly, I'm also noticing that the, the coil is sort of loose in here. There's a lot of play in it. I don't know if that has anything to do with the fact that it's not running properly. They're usually quite snug in, in this little housing. Um, to find a replacement coil is a difficult uh, thing to come up with. For example, I have one from an older clock. And although it looks similar, and this is an oil-filled rotor that I was referring to, although similar, the sizes are a little bit different, and this actually won't fit in here. The uh, Just the dimensions of it are, don't match up. In any event, I'll still open it up and see what I can find uh, as far as what's going on with it and uh, maybe we'll get lucky. To open it up, I have to take out these three screws, which should get the plate off, and we'll see if this front portion comes out with it or if they're gonna uh, separate. I think they should uh, be two separate pieces. I don't know if there's additional screws holding this to here, but we'll find out. Okay, that's a pretty long screw, so I'm thinking it's the only one that's going to be in here. And when you're taking these apart, what you have to be careful with is when you lift up the plate, not to cause any of the gears to get dislodged. So that you know exactly what position they're supposed to be in. And we'll see if we can do that. Okay, that came off. That was easy enough. Now if I lift this up, hopefully the gears will all stay put. Okay, I'm definitely seeing some resistance, and I don't want to pull it apart until I can make sure that the other gears aren't moving on me. What I'll sometimes do is get in there with a screwdriver, hold down the ones that uh, are sticking. Sometimes a little bit of oil will help free it up. So I have to play with that. And once I get this off, I'll come back. What I'm seeing as I try to take it apart, the alarm set knob seems to be preventing it from coming off of the plate here. And there's a small nut holding it on, on the front of it. I'm gonna to try to remove that to see if I can get that off and then maybe it'll come apart. Although difficult, I was able to remove the nut on the uh, alarm set knob. However, that is not what's keeping it attached to the back of the plate. This little nut just holds the dial down, um, the indicator dial. So at this point, I really don't think I can properly restore this clock. It just has too many issues between the fact that it's so noisy, that it's running backwards, that the coil is quite loose in here. Um, so I think I have two options to go with this. One is clean everything up as best I can <clears throat> and put it back together. I think it's a great display piece. It's a very good looking clock. Or I have seen these uh, type of mechanisms, this shape in other Hammond clocks that are not alarm clocks. And if I'm able to pick up one of those, I might be able to substitute this with a, a different one and get this clock running. Uh, and so I may look to see what's available out there. It took a little while, but I was able to locate what I believe to be the same size mechanism for this clock. Uh, this is the one that I located. It has a silver back, which is different from the original, which was black. And I received this one in a non-working condition. And when I took it apart, what I discovered the problem was rather than with the gears, it was with the coil. And 
there is a brake. So this is the coil that came in the replacement uh, mechanism. There's a brake somewhere in the wiring because when I touch it with the ohm meter, I don't get any readings. And that's something that I really haven't come across before, although I'm aware that it can occur. So what I decided to do was remove the coil from the original motor and swap it out with the coil in my replacement motor. And I hooked it up, plugged it in, and I have seen that it does in fact work, and I will show you. I'll seat the minute hand. Give the start knob a spin. And it's running. So this is what I'm going to use. And now it's time to clean everything up and reassemble it. I also should point out that although it sounds rather noisy when it's laying on its back like that, when you seat it in a proper position, it runs quiet. Okay, let's put everything together now. I ran into one problem that I did not anticipate. The clock that this came from had a curved glass in the front of it. And as a result, the hands are further away from this plate than they are in this clock. So when I inserted this one back into my rectangular flat frame, this stem was hitting up against the glass, so there was no room for the hands. And if I compare the two mechanisms, you'll see what I'm talking about. How, how, how much taller one is than the other. So fortunately, I actually was able to locate another one like this, except it comes from a flat clock. And I do believe that the hands are the same on the one that I'm expecting to get as they are in the original. So once that arrives, I'll go back to work and see how it comes out. As you can see, I now have three mechanisms here. I received the newest one, and this is the one that I felt when I took a, what I thought was a close look at all the photos, that it would fit because of two things. One, it had this similar thin frame, at least the face of it, very similar to the frame on the clock I'm looking to restore. But what I couldn't tell by looking at the photos was that the glass over it was actually curved. And as a result, the stem on this one that holds the hands, again, is sticking too far out. So I cannot use this one. So it got me looking back at the first two to see what else I could figure out to get them to work. What I did was I took the coil that was working, although running backwards in this mechanism, and placed it in this clock and it was running the correct way. Uh, the problem again was that the stem on this one was sticking out too far. So I decided to try to swap the gears from the insides of these two units and I sort of mixed and matched them and then took the front plate off of the original one, placed it on my second one, hooked everything up, and I'm happy to say it's running. Again, when you tilt it, it gets kind of noisy, but I've lubricated these gears quite a bit and it runs pretty quiet once I set it in the proper position. So now the next step for me is I plan to totally replace the glass. It has a nice big chip on the corner here. And then it'll be a matter of cleaning up the brass frame, the hands, and then reassembling everything. So I'll get working on that and then we'll come back. I was able to get a new piece of glass. I've cleaned up the hands, the frame, the dial. What I'm gonna do next is attach a new power cord to the mechanism, and then I'll be ready to just reassemble all the pieces back together. I've attached the new power cord, and what I'm gonna do with it is sort of tuck it in, loop it around, and have it come out the back here. And I will secure this with some tape, probably Gorilla Tape. It has to be held snug enough to allow this housing to slide over it. It'll be a really tight fit. So I'll work on that next. 
Okay, I've covered it with the tape. Have it down as snug as I can. And now we'll try to slide the housing over it. Okay, that is in. Now I have to secure this one with the three screws here. Then I'll come back. I have the three screws in. Now I have to replace the set time knob. That's just a tight friction grip. There we go. Okay, next step is gonna be putting on the dial and the hands and attaching it back to the frame. So let's get working on that. The one thing I always seem to forget when putting these back together is that when I secured this plate into the mechanism with these three screws, actually prior to doing that, I have to attach this front plate. So what I need to do next is remove these three screws and be careful not to dislodge this plate because if it shifts out at all, the, uh, the various gears might come loose from their uh, bushings. So next step, take these out, secure the front plate, and then I'll come back. I was able to secure the back part of the frame to the front plate. Next, I'll seat the dial. And then I'm going to place the hands over it, but I'm going to take my time and be very careful because I don't want to scratch anything. So when I have the three hands in place, then I'll come back. I've got the hands on it and I plugged it back in just to make sure that everything is still working. And it is. So next step will be to mount this onto the front of the frame with the glass and then we'll be finished. Everything is back together and it is running. It's no longer an alarm clock, but I think it looks too good to be an alarm clock. So there you have the Hammond Riviera built in the 1930s. This is in the neighborhood of 90 years old and hopefully we'll get another 90 years out of it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to check out some of my others. Leave a comment if you like. And that's pretty much it. Bye for now.